from Britain. Over the years in which the British Empire has been fulfilled, thousands of, uh, thousands of vessels bringing raw materials to Britain, carrying our goods out to the world, rounded that southern tip of Africa known as the Cape of Good Hope, all protected by the guns of the Royal Navy. Tonight, we sail aboard the 46-gun frigate HMS Unicorn. Well, the firepower of those Royal Navy 18-pounder guns was formidable. A cannon shot from those could punch through three feet of solid oak, and they had a range of a mile and a half. Many of the guns came from the Scottish Carron Iron Works, most famously the short barrel carronades, which lasted well into the 19th century. A firing a naval cannon required a great deal of labor and manpower. A typical gun crew needed nine men. The gun powder was brought up to the guns by powder boys, typically 10, 14 years of age. But the older and stronger crews were needed to run the guns out until the barrels protruded from their gun bolts. Now when a naval cannon was to be fired, first of all it had to be swapped to get rid of any embers from a previous shot. Gunpowder was then rammed home, followed by a cannonball, before the hard work of running out the gun in its carriage, which could weigh well over two tons in a rural ship, before the cannon could be fired at just the right moment. The crews normally had to stand beside the guns, because after they were fired, these heavy guns would recoil back with tremendous force. Now the drummers beat the quarters and the guns are run out. The figure head of the bow of our vessel represents a unicorn leaping over the waves, wearing the naval coronet with alternating sails and stern castles. The mythical unicorn is not just a horse with a single horn, yet the legs and beard of a goat, and the figure head therefore has got cloven hooves, and if you could see that, you would see he would have a lion's tail. Sixteen different Royal Navy ships have carried the name Unicorn and between them, they've earned one of the highest numbers of battle arms of any Royal Navy ship. And there go the guns, firing in action. Because even in those days, ladies and gentlemen, there wasn't enough money uh, to provide powder to practice firing at the uh, ship's captains so had to wait until they were in action before they could practice. Now in the second half of the 19th century, the Royal Navy bought only one ship to ship action, but its naval brigade had seen the Royal Marines were trained in land warfare, and they fought in actions as far apart as China and Africa. When the security of the South African trade route was threatened in the Boer War, the action of a naval brigade dragging in specially adapted guns overland to relieve the siege of Ladysmith in 1899 went down in history as the origin of the famous naval gun run. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we've got two teams who are going to demonstrate to you some of the elements of that uh, naval gun run and uh, have a little race amongst themselves. Now, on the port watch, we've got HMS Rally and on the starboard watch, HMS Neptune. And I think those of you in sections one to eight, really, uh, you're on the port watch, so I hope you'll be able to cheer on HMS Rally. In fact, give them a cheer now and let the team hear how much, how loudly you can cheer. Section one to eight. And sections 9 to 17, may I ask you to cheer on HMS Neptune. Let them hear just how loudly you'll be able to cheer them on once they start the race. Right, the teams have got your support and encouragement. Now they're just signing each other up. When, when the uh, guns were dragged across the South African belt in 1899, they had all sorts of difficult rough terrain to cover. So the guns had to be capable of being dismantled, carried in big pieces across difficult terrain like uh, rivers and across ravines. And that's why you'll see the guns and the limbers can be dismantled down to their, their parts and then reassembled to uh, carry on. And during the course of the race, the uh, gun, each gun will be fired uh, ooh, six times. So the teams are now on their mark, so get ready to cheer, ladies and gentlemen. The port watch HMS Rally, the starboard watch HMS Neptune. And they're just, as they're sorting themselves out, ready for the race. And any moment now, they'll be off. So prepare to cheer, ladies and gentlemen. And, and away 
Thank you. 